Warning, the following video has not been approved by the Comic Code Authority and is intended for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Comic Assassin. And this is a special episode because this is my birthday episode. That is right. I am one year older. And don't worry, I am over the age of 14, so COPPA rules do not apply here and there. Um, but yeah, I'm going to open up some stuff for y'all. Alright, I got two band boxes plus a tipsy bidding, right? And this really was a tipsy bidding, alright? And I'm doing this video now because it is my birthday, and who knows, I might be getting on later and making an even more outrageous tipsy bid than this one. So let's just get started. The band box, you know, I open these guys up. This is the pop culture box. This one came really, really, really late. This is actually the June box. I got it in August, about a week and a half ago. But then I had it for a few days, and I got an email that the July box had been sent. I was like, you know what, let me just wait. Uh, let me just open up all at one time. That way, you know, I'm not having to make two or three different videos for just a simple unboxing, right? The only franchise I can really remember on this one was X-Men. And it, it it hinted towards X-Men, the original animated series. So I was like, oh, I'm all in. I'm all in. I want to say maybe Scott Pilgrim, which I'm not familiar with. I know of the movie. I don't think I've ever watched the movie. Other than that, I can't remember what the franchises were. So let's just jump into it and see what we got. All right, so like always, you're probably going to have the paper. Um, off the top, uh, what I do like about the band box, it, it, they put everything face down. So even if you look at it, usually you can't tell what it is. But I do see that I have a level up card. That means I got something that is a more limited edition. So that's cool. Um, we'll start with the pen. Okay, you got a dude rocking out the guitar. I'm not familiar with this. And because I'm not familiar with this, I'm going to assume that this is the Scott Pilgrim movie franchise. Once again, I have nothing against it. Just haven't had time to watch it and, you know, too much stuff to watch, not enough time. So, decent looking pin, just not familiar with the franchise. Um, here's the collector card. So like I said, they're doing like a hero and villains theme. And this is makes sense. So last time they did Marty McFly, this is obviously Biff from Back to the Future. Got some shine to it. That's cool. So yeah, Biff. Um, looks like we have a prop. Uh, it's got a little jingle to it, so it sounds like it's a chain or something. And there is a chain, and okay, so it's a pair of dog tags. And on it, it says Jane B. Barnes, and now this reminds me of what the other franchise was, and it was Captain America. So these are the dog tags for Bucky Barnes. Now, I'm going to be honest with you about this one. I like the concept. You know, me being a comic guy, I love whenever I get something comic book related. But the quality of this is crap. I mean, this is crappy quality. There's already scratches on the dog tags themselves. Um, not intentionally put there. They came out with some ones a few months ago. It might have been longer than that. That was like a Wolverine, Logan dog tags, and those were so good quality dog tags. These, this metal is so thin. I mean, I could, I could really. I'm not gonna do it. I could, I could probably squeeze this, bend it, break it in half. This is really crappy quality. I'm not pleased with this, though. I do like the idea of what they did, but yeah, this could have been much, much better if they just went higher quality with it. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a little disappointing. So, off the top, already got a pin that I could really care less about. The card's cool because I have the rest of the thing, and then I have this prop, which I don't like. So, already off to a bad start with this damn box. Alright, first print. Boom. And you know what? And I like this. So, I got something I like. This is, a, a, we all know who this guy is. This is Gambit, right? So I'm assuming this is what the X-Men franchise was. Um, this is fan art, so it's signed by whoever whoever did the art. They no longer put who the artist is on the back uh, back little thing they put in there. But yeah, that's cool. That to me, this is a unique piece of art. You can it doesn't look like someone just photocopied something, put it in some uh, like Photoshop and just manipulated some stuff. This looks like some legit artwork to me. And I dig that. And this is 831 at a 2200. So, yeah, I dig that. So, that leaves, if that's the fan art, this is probably the celebrity autograph. Um, so, alright, damn box, you redeemed yourself a little bit here, I'm not going to lie. I got two X-Men items. So this is the X-Men original series, uh, animated series. I'm just going to assume that this is signed by the person who did the voice of Rogue. But yeah, I'm, I am completely down with that. Completely down with that. So the, these two things alone make the box worth it for me. The card's cool because I'm getting the whole set. I'm not, I'm not I'm not really hating on the pin. I'm just not familiar with the franchise. This upsets me a little bit just because of the quality, not because of the thought. So overall, I'm pleased. But yeah, fan box. I, I really like this. I really like that a lot. All right. So that's it for that one. Oh, they do. Oh, they do have the spoiler sheet. So yeah, the celebrity autograph was from Lenore Zan, who did the voice of Rogue in X-Men original, uh, original series. Um, so I guess the one up that I had, the level up, was the Biff card. I guess here's the, I mean, you might not be able to see it. Here's the original card that you could get, which is more of the old school Biff. I guess it had the more futuristic Biff with the helmet. Um, that shows some of the variant stuff that you can get. Oh, and I like this. I like this. So when it comes to the variants that they had, they actually did different prints. And you might not be able to tell, there's two of them. There was a different Gambit print you could have gotten, as well as a different Rogue. All in the same style, but they're different. And I like that. Because what sometimes what they do is they just change the color. It's still the same print, just with different colors. And I think that's a cheap, cheap out. So I really like that they did different actual variants for their fan art. That is, that, that's sweet. Kudos on that, all right? Some saving graces. All right, so let's get on to this next one. This is July, this is July uh, box, pop culture, and I'll be honest with you, I totally forget what the franchises are, so I'm just as blind going in this as, as y'all. So I'm gonna open it up. Once again, got your thing. And right off the bat, I love it, but I hate it. Right off the bat. Um, the big item that's right on top, and I'm going to tell you why I don't like it. I'm going to tell you why I love it. Um, first off, it's a license plate. And I can, even though I've never finished this series, Lawyer Up. So this, this has to be from Breaking Bad. Um... I don't think this was ever on Better Call Saul. I don't. I, I haven't watched. I mean, I've seen series of it. My wife's into it more than I am. But that's a cool license plate. That's probably one that I'm gonna give to my wife. What I didn't like, as you can see, look how bent it is, because it's too big for the box. So they had to bend it to get it in. That I, that to me, I I don't know. 
I mean, you could probably bend it out, don't get me wrong, but it's more the principle. But hey, I do like the license plate. Um, I think my wife is going to be excited about that. Um, let's go with the pin. Okay, so yeah, the other one, so obviously Breaking Bad was one of the franchises. Aqua Teen, Aqua Teen Hunger Force is one of the, the franchises. This is Shake. Man, I remember when Aqua Teen Hunger Force first came out. Man, I used to rock that stuff all the time. I used to love some Adult Swim. In fact, I think last night me and my wife fell asleep watching uh, Robot Chicken. Um, here's the card. So we had the Marty McFly, we had the Biff. So I'm assuming this is going to be a new start of a hero villains card thing that they're doing. So let's see. Wonder Woman. Okay. Um, so yeah, we could debate. Is this a hero? Is this a villain? I don't know. <laughs> now we know she's the hero. But who the villain is going to be on the next month's card? Um, that, that's a good question. I'm just really wondering if these cards are all going to fit up into like a mosaic you know, type thing, or if it's just going to be duos, right? It would, it would have been more awesome if they have them all in one, like, collective frame that you could put up. But we'll see. But, yeah, Wonder Woman, not my favorite, but, you know, I love, always love some comic book love. Um, oh, I also, I also got another level up. So I don't know what the level up is, but... We'll find out if there's another card in here like last time. Alright, so here is one print. I don't know if this is the fan art or the autograph. And it's a little bit of both. And based on the numbering, this is my level up. So this is 229 out of 500. And this has to be from Umbrella Academy. Look. I forget her name. She's playing the, the violin. There's an umbrella in the background. It's decent fan art. So yeah, that, that's, that, that has to be from Umbrella Academy. So yeah, I dig it. Uh, oh, and last but not least, I forgot to mention that they are doing Beckett certification when it comes to their, their autographs now. So you can see, I don't want to look at it yet, they have Beckett certification. Uh, so here's the autograph for this month, or for July. Okay, so it's this is from, from Terminator, or T2. And I'm just going to go on a limb here and just assume that this is not Arnold's signature. This is his signature. <laughs> that, I'm just going to go out on a limb. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Am, am, I, am I the only guy that cried at the end of Terminator 2? Alright, because I did. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to man up. I did shed a little tear at the end of T2. Um, and of course there's scratch off things I can do, I'll do it at the end. Uh, let me see. The celebrity autograph is signed by Nick Stahl, who is from Terminator. Uh, the fan art print. They did have some, some variant prints, you could have gotten some meatballs or fry. Uh, Lawyer Up is from Breaking Bad. So, once again, the, the Umbrella Academy, which it was, and they did the exact same opposite. I was just praising you, Bandbox, for not doing this in the last box, and you do it this box. Basically, they took the same print. This is the, what the original print was. I don't know how well you're going to see it. And then they do two different variants. And the only thing that's different is the, like, the color, right? It's the exact same. And while I know it's still a more limited edition, it kind of takes away from it. So that is the two BAM boxes that I'm opening up on my 21st birthday. Um, let's just roll with that. And now let's get on to the tipsy bidding. All right. Um, one package, two books. All right. Uh, got off eBay. All right. So first off, Came in one of these packages, kind of all dinged up. And wow. So, usually we use cardboard for protection, right? Uh, but that wouldn't tell the cardboard actually 
<laughs> encompassing all of the books, right? So that is some of the weirdest cardboard things that I have too, and I got looks like they're in the same. Are they? No, okay, they're both different. I do like that they did this. Okay, sorry, had a little bit of a delay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna swear on my life, this is the third time, third time I've tried to make this video for you guys and I've always been interrupted by the kids. Third time, and I don't usually like to do editing, so yeah, there's gonna be a little bit of a splice because I'm not gonna do it again, all right? But I was, <laughs> it's frustrating, it's frustrating. Anyway, what I was trying to say, at least I believe this is where I left off, is I do like they did put in a little special like printed off thing that says my name thank you for your purchase that's that's cool um, so I like that personalization of it the shipping aspect using this as your cardboard backing was a little bit of the up um, especially knowing the age of these books these are these are some early 70s books so let's start with the first one and I knew this one has some condition both of them do have condition issues but I bought both these books for the pair, it's like $9.99, plus like a few bucks shipping. So they were really, really inexpensive books. So, you know, $5 a book plus. And this is The Amazing World of DC Comics number three. And so these are like the, the fanzine, you know, magazine, you know, oversized um, type of books. And it's, the outside, like I said, has some damage. Um, you know, obviously with this, and this is some really thick style um, covers here. So there's are a, some a little bit of you know creasing, or I shouldn't even say creasing. It's more just where it's been handled. Um, but I'm gonna say the inside, the pages are white, and I look forward to reading this kind of stuff. I mean, it's it's all article style type stuff, but the pages look inside look really good. Let me see if there's any cool artwork. Sneak preview, 1975. So yeah, there's some there's some really, really cool oh the Joker. What's going on with the Joker? Um got some early Shazam action in there. That's cool. So yeah, I mean, I like this kind of stuff, and they got some, you know, some funnies, some cartoons in there, uh, or comics. I wish I wish I knew which one that is, but um, I'll have to take my time going through that. But this is not why I bought the lot. I bought this one, and this is why it truly was a tipsy bidding. And I did not realize this to after the fact. I will say, part of the blame does go on the seller, but a lot of the blame goes on me. So this picture was was shown perfectly on when he was selling the book. The other book was advertised as a Comic Reader 100. I bought that because Comic Reader 100 has a preview of ASM 129, the first appearance of the Punisher, like five or six months in advance to when it came out in 1974. So I was like, you know what? For this low of a, of a bid, I want to. I, I just want to see what's in there, right? I just want to see what it looks like. But they showed a, a, a snippet of the picture, a snippet of the picture. Right? They didn't show the whole thing. And then after I bought it, like two, three days go by, I was like, you know what? Let me let me look up this book a little bit more. And I was looking at the cover, and I was like, the cover that I'm looking at does not match what was on that listing. So the, comic, the the seller lists this as a comic a comic reader 100 and this is actually in fact a god what rocket blast comic collector 100 kind of the same thing it is a fanzine type of thing about the same so size came out I believe in the same year 73 which comic comic reader 100 came out in 73 um, but yes, I mean, honestly, I looked up the values of it, and on comparing the two, even though the comic reader has the preview of ASM 129, 
this one is actually valued higher just because it's got this awesome awesome cover work got some Superman going on uh, and apparently there's some other stuff in here um, I haven't flipped through it yet uh, so that's cool so yeah I've, I've never really looked at any of these um, let's see here it looks like a lot of advertising too where you can go in and you can pay whatever you know people can advertise books dude look first thing I come up right here this is 1973 they're saying amazing fantasy number 15 near mint 25 dollars it is right there dude did you imagine you had a time machine Amazing, amazing fantasy number 15, near mint, $25. Oh my gosh. That is nuts. So, I'll, yeah, I'm going to go through this. I just want to look at the old prices they were selling stuff for back in the day. Um, yeah, Rock, Rocket Blast and the Comic Collector. So yeah, there's some there's some cool art in here. Let's see. Let's see if I see anything worth pointing out. I'm not gonna go page by page. Uh, I thought there was. I thought I saw something. Oh yeah. That's pretty dope. But yeah, so that's a perfect example of a tipsy bid where I bought something based on what was written versus what my, I should have done my homework and actually looked at the pictures a little more in detail, done my homework. Um, but overall, I'm still pleased with the book. So that's everybody. Thanks for coming and hanging with me on my birthday tipsy bidding episode. Um, it is new comic book day. Went and got a whole bunch of new books today. Um, and so, yeah, I'll be sharing with that with y'all in the next few days or so. There's a lot of crazy news going on with the whole firings of DC and um, the, the key collector wraps getting some heat right now. And they really are. So I'll try to bring that up next time I talk to y'all. Uh, but with that being said, sorry, getting caught in throat. This is the Comic Assassin, y'all. I love you guys. Thank you for hanging out. Peace.